Where do you live? I live in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I'm a professor of animal science at Colorado State University. But you travel a lot, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, how often are you gone? Well, before COVID hit, about 85% of the time. Oh you know, now it's about half the time. You know, some conferences are, you know, staying on, on virtual. Yeah. Do you like the virtual? There's some benefits, but you also need to go to live meetings too. I agree. But I'm seeing with the virtual that there's certain things I can get a lot more reach and talk to a lot more people. I've talked to people in developing countries, awesome. uh, which is really good just on very basics like certain things like early childhood intervention, yeah. things that they could do. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, a random question. Do you have animals at home? Who takes care of them when you're gone? Well, I don't have animals at home because I travel too much. Yeah. And I didn't get a pet during COVID because then the pet's going to be miserable when I leave. <laughs> and this has been a, a problem. Yeah, There's yeah. Separation, distress, and dogs. Like yeah. People have been with them 24-7. Are you a dog person? I'm a dog person. I'm a dog person, too. Yeah. Um, okay, so for anyone who doesn't know who you are, it's probably not possible, but can you introduce yourself, please? Well, I'm Temple Grandin, a professor of animal science at Colorado State University, and I had no speech until age four, all the symptoms of really severe autism, and I was very lucky to get into very good early intervention by two and a half. I cannot emphasize with little kids that are not talking, two, three, four years old, the importance of early educational intervention. Mm -hmm. And the main things that were taught to me were speech, and the other big thing is turn taking. How to take turns at games. Yes. Because this helps with a lot of the impulsive behavior that happens later on. You know, mm -hmm. just use board games, and then skills. Washing your hands, dressing, brushing your mm -hmm. teeth, basic skills. Mm -hmm. Those are the things you work on with, you know, little kids. Mm -hmm. And then when they start to get some words, always give them an opportunity to use those words. Yes. I say, use your words but give them time to respond. Process, right? And the processing speed is slow. Mm -hmm. They're like a phone on one bar of service. Mm -hmm. You have to give that phone time to bring that web page up. Yep. Well, that's the same way it is with the language. Okay. Give them time to respond. Always encourage them to use the words and slow down. Because when adults talk fast, when I was a little kid, it went bloop, 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 bloop. And when they slowed down, they could understand. Mm -hmm. I'll say to my son, do you want chicken to eat or pancakes? And a minute later, he'll be like, Ch -ch -ch. and I'm like, what were we talking about again? Because it's been a minute longer. Yeah, but you see, yeah. he may have a very, very slow processing yes. speed. Yeah, and I learned that as he's gotten older. Yeah, and you've got to give them time to yes. respond. And I think the best analogy is a phone with a one bar or maybe half a bar of service. Yeah. And it takes time for it to download that traffic report or whatever it is you want from it. Yeah. So I have a question for you. <laughs> when my son was younger, three and four, I felt like I had the pressure of teaching him everything. And as he's gotten older, I've learned, like, for example, I don't think it matters if he can tie his shoes because he can wear slip-ons. Yeah, you can wear slip-ons. I don't think it matters if he buttons his jeans because he, he, he prefers sweatpants. Do you think that it's okay to pick and choose what there's, you know, what's easier for them to understand? Well, yes, as long as it's something that you know, is reasonably accountable. I mean, some kids don't want to wear clothes. Being naked is not acceptable. Amen. Um, you're going to have to wear, wear clothes. Yep. You know, what I find, I have trouble now finding pants that don't itch. And then once I find well, some that don't itch, I buy a whole bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's what I just wear all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it feels the same. And give them some choice of clothes to wear, because I'd rather not have sweatpants be mm -hmm. what you wear all the time. My son loves leggings. I heard you mention leggings. Leggings, leggings are, are good. Like one mom was complaining as her little girl wants leggings. She said, well, I don't want to wear leggings all the time. Let's buy them in like 10 different colors mm -hmm. and, and wash them. And, and you just wear leggings all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. Nope. They're in fashion now. Yep. I want to talk a little bit about playing on our kids' strengths. So yes. when my son was diagnosed, we were told everything he would never do. We were told predictions. He would never talk. He would never make a friend. All these things. Well, how old was he when they told you that? Three. You don't know. The no. Three -year -olds. With three-year-olds, you don't know. Do I not know. I really severe when I was three. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so detrimental to do this to parents, to tell these parents all this negative. That's why I'm so thankful that you're sharing and talking. 
Um, but I just only recently learned about playing up on his strengths. So he takes 5,000 photos a day of the things he loves. I encourage that nonstop. I'm like, then we got to encourage photos other people might want. So you see, this is a useful work skill. Yes. You take pictures of things other people would want. Maybe yes. you put them on greeting cards. Oh, that's a great or, idea. Um, uh, he likes trains. Maybe he can take some pictures for a train enthusiast club mm -hmm. of certain trains. Mm -hmm. Because the really important job skill is doing stuff other people want. When mm -hmm. I was in high school, I had a little sign painting business. Okay. And my very first job was for a hair salon. Okay. And when I got paid for this sign, I had to make a sign that she would want. Yes, not what you wanted. No, what, what she, she would wanted. want. Yeah. See, that's the really important thing. Yep, yep. Um, okay, I'm sure you're asked this all the time, but I encourage my son, I, I, I call it the push and pull. I try to push him to try new things, and then I pull back if it, if it gets yep, too hard. that's good. And what do you say to parents where it's just scary? It's scary to bring Cooper out and try new things. What do you... Do well, I'm seeing parents overprotect their kids. I'm seeing 16-year-olds good grades in the school, normal school, and the kid has never gone shopping by himself. And then when I suggest that maybe you go buy something like printer paper, yeah. the mom burst into tears. She's scared. I suggested just going and buying printer paper. Or another mom I talked to and I said, next time you're at a gas station, pick one where, pick a pump and pick one where you can see in the shop window while you're filling the car. Yeah. Have them run in and buy some, uh, some water in there. Yeah, and pay for it and yes. wait. And, and, and she's right there. She can see through the window. And the mom's scared to do this. I'm talking fully verbal kids doing well in school yes. that have not done these things. I was doing like at eight. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. So how do you encourage me to start? So my son, he's, he's very smart and he's very bright and he um, communicates with a speech device, okay. a few words. Yep. Um, can be alone in a room and be safe. We're not, I mean, he's not unsafe, or like but um, not safe around streets or yeah. roads. He actually seems to run towards cars for a reaction. He'll laugh and run towards the cars, which is very scary. Well, that is that is scary. Yeah, now, but I, I, I When I was a young child, I was, you know, safety with roads was just drilled into me. And you know what made me realize that you have to be careful? What? This is a teachable moment. There was a squashed squirrel on the road. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I was told that's what would happen to you if a car hits you. Yes. It was obvious that the veterinarian could not fix this squirrel. No, squished. It was completely squished. Yeah, and then that made sense to you. Yeah, that made sense to me. And that was just something that just happened. We were out for a walk, and it just happened to be there. And yeah. Teachable moment. Yeah. This is why you don't run into the street. Yes. I want Cooper to be able to walk safely independently, but I'm like the mom you described earlier where I worry so much. Well, the thing is, is the roads and the cars is a real danger. Yep. Going into a convenience store where you're right there pumping gas. Yes. It's n and not dangerous. Yep. You know, I do it in the daytime. And yep. It's so, not dangerous. Where the road has a real hazard. Yep. Going into the office supply store and buying printer paper. Yeah. For a teenager that's fully verbal is not hazardous. No. You see, I, as a visual thinker, I'm differentiating between something with a road that has a true danger and mm -hmm. going into an office supply store that doesn't. Yeah. Can you explain what visual thinking is? Okay, let's talk about kinds of thinking. I'm what's called yeah. an object visualizer. Okay. Everything I think about is a photorealistic picture. So the kinds of things I'm good at is art, photography, animals, and mechanics. And you see it. Yeah, I see it. I see it. And then you have the visual spatial pattern thinker. Okay. This is your mathematician, your chemist, your computer programmer. Okay. And then you have the word thinker autistic that loves history, loves facts, okay. uh, sports statistics. And in my book, The Autistic Brain, I, prevent, I present uh, data that shows that these different thinking exists. Okay. Also, I've got a new book coming out. We're doing galleys right now called Visual Thinking, The Hidden Gifts of People Who Think in Pictures, uh, Patterns, and Abstractions. And there's a lot of scientific research that supports this. Now, individuals on the autism spectrum tend to be more extreme, good at one of these kinds of thinking, and terrible at the other. And they can come, autistic people can come in three flavors. Object visualizer like me, visual, spatial, math, and music. Okay. 
or word loving lists and facts. Okay, okay. Uh, when do you have time to write books? <laughs> well, a lot of them, be perfectly honest, I've had co authors, but I got some books that I've totally written myself. All my livestock stuff and um, the uh, my book on thinking in pictures, the way I see it, that's all my writing. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. But you really encourage a parent to figure out or try to determine how our children think and then play on those skills. Okay, but now on the other hand, you're not going to see this in three year olds. It's going to come Very a little true. bit. A little bit older and um, mother always encouraged my art ability always 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 encouraged it okay you take that thing that the kids good at broaden it okay they had me just paint the same horse head over and again over and over again let's draw the stable let's draw the saddle you so know you broaden you have to you broaden. Take pictures of different things that's right where there's the other place where people get mixed up is what is a skill versus interest Horses is an interest. Object visualization is a skill. Okay. They're two. They're two different things. But I worked with a lot of people um, on mechanical engineering stuff, where they're designing complicated equipment in a factory, and they may have barely graduated from high school. Yeah. I call that the clever engineering department. I have a friend who always says her son will work at NASA, but he won't be able to tie his shoes. Like when she describes them. But this is this is just it. And, and there's two parts of engineering. There's more mathematical part that they look, teach at the university. But right now, if you want to build a poultry processing plant, yep. you're going to get it in 100 shipping containers from Holland. Holland, a high wage country. Because they kept their skilled trades and didn't stick their nose up at it. So they're building the state of the art electronic chip making machine and the state of the art poultry processing plant. Obviously not the building, but right. all the equipment that goes inside. Awesome. Okay, before we wrap up, advice for parents. If there's one thing that you could tell us. If it's a little kid, I'm going to tell you to um, get working on early intervention like okay. now. If you can't get services, you've got to start working with this kid now. Okay. And if that means recruiting grandmothers in the neighborhood, go ahead and recruit them. Oh, great and idea. you're going to find that some of those grandmothers have a natural knack. Now, okay. when kids get older, I want to take the thing they're good at and expand it. Okay, that's where we are. The other big problem I'm seeing now is kids aren't getting exposed to enough things to find out what they're going to like because they've taken all the hands-on classes out of the schools in some states. Worst thing they ever did. You mean like home ec, shop yes. class? Yeah. Art, sewing, music, all of those things, theater, all I, of that stuff. I just toured my son's. He goes to middle school next year. Speaking of terrified, and his classroom has a stove and a kitchen, Good. and I was so excited. Good. I'm like, because we work on, I, I work on him using the microwave and to making toast and all those Good. things every day. But I'm seeing too many kids not learning life skills. Well, that's all kids. Just they, too, but think. I think it hurts the autistic kids more. It hurts the normal kids will muddle through it. But yeah. The autistic kids, it's really hurting them because I worked with three or four different people. And three of them own metalworking shops, own their own businesses. That's awesome. 20 patents. That's and amazing. they're autistic. And this is one of the things that makes me want to pull my hair out, is I go back and forth between the autism world and the industrial world. And right now, we've got some, um, I'm, I'm going to probably be back out on the plant floor working on some equipment. Uh, my, my Labor Day is going to be out on the plant floor because the people that have my kind of mind, we're not being replaced in the factories. How do we how do we fix that? Let's get them off the video games, and we're gonna have to replace the video games with something interesting, like car mechanics. Okay. Okay. Not uh, shelving groceries. Not the McDonald's. No, that's not interesting. It's not gonna grab their brain and no. excite them. No, car mechanics will grab their brain. That's what okay. we've got to do, because the people I'm working with are all retiring, and Dream they're not over. getting replaced. I always think my son, he would be, I, I don't know if he has it's an interest yet, but I think working on trains, I could see him being at the railroad and doing something there. Well, and it got it started out, you, um, these were all young adults, no communication with each other, but there's been problems with the video game addictions, and where it's been successful to get rid of the video games has been replacing with car mechanics. And the last one I just heard about works at an oil change place that every different kind of vehicle comes in. See, if you work at the dealer, it's going to be boring. Oh, because yeah. it might, because it would just be the same kind of cars. But when it's every kind of different vehicle, 
then how you change the oil is different in the different vehicles. Mm -hmm. And the other three were like engine rebuild and more serious mechanics. Mm -hmm. Dr. Peter, have you met him? He was here, or oh. Dr. Peter, he was telling us, he's from uh, Belgium, and he was telling us that at their airport, um, they hire solely autistic adults to do the bag scanning because they love watching the stuff go through and decipher what it is. And they bet you they're very accurate at bag scanning. Well, and here's what he was saying, that a, a person with a, a typical brain is like, oh, red bag's fine, red bag's fine, the next red bag, don't even check it, it's just fine. Where the autistic brain looks at every bag as the first time. But that's where you need that attention to detail. Yeah. There are certain jobs, and then they have to make sure that the tag actually scanned, too. Yeah. They didn't just swipe it and it failed to scan. Yeah. So one more question, because I'm just fascinated. Do you, how do we encourage businesses to hire autistic individuals? Well, there's individuals? some businesses doing a good job on this. I've been doing some very good Zoom calls. S&P. Okay. A thousand people on a call with S&P. And um, I, I talked to a bank who hired um, two fully verbal, verbal kind of autistics to sell financial products. Awesome. Because they were appreciated for the specialized knowledge. Dell Computer, IBM, Amazon. Oh, Amazon's uh, good? And uh, Microsoft. These companies are actually reaching out. Now, um, some other companies that I will not name, more okay. consumer product type stuff, okay. uh, we will not name them. Yeah, it's more lip service. And the amount of people we had on the Zoom calls was way, way lower. Yeah. You see, I think what the companies that are really doing it, it they're going after the uh, mathematical minds. Yes. To run the, like, okay, Amazon, IBM, companies like that have their cloud services. Yep. That requires a huge amount of programmer type people to support that. There's huge infrastructure. Yes. Uh, yes. To keep those kind of services going. And so they're actively reaching out because I've been to, I've been out to Silicon Valley, half those programmers are on the spectrum. And so those kinds of companies are really doing really serious active recruiting. Good. Where I, what I've seen in some of the more consumer products, where the product they have is not computer programming yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, they've got the diversity stuff, and they've kind of made a disability silo inside the corporation, which is not good. Lip service. Yeah. It, and, and when I talk to those companies, some of those companies have factories. And I said, you need these people to keep that factory running. And you need them really badly. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to uh, promote your book one more time? Well, Please? I've got a new book coming yeah. out. It's called Visual Thinking: okay. Hidden Gifts of People Who Think in Pictures, Patterns, and Abstractions. It's a uh, pre-sale right now on Amazon, and it's going to really go into all the different kinds of thinking and how business needs thinking. Now, of course. Right now, tech companies are doing a decent job of, of starting to reach out for the mathematical minds, but my kind of mind, yes. we need my kind of mind to keep factories going and to yeah. build and design factory equipment. So there's going to be a lot of emphasis in my kind of mind because I'm worried that since I can't do higher math, we're just getting screened out. Yes. And you need yes. us. Uh, it's what I call the clever engineering department. Love you it. look at a big food processing plant. Yeah. I went back to all my projects, and my kind of thinker, people who might barely have graduated from high school, they'll invent the new packaging machine, awesome. what I call the clever engineering department. Yeah. And they'll maintain the factory. And then the more mathematical degree engineer will do boilers, refrigeration, power and water requirements, and make sure the roof doesn't collapse. Yeah. We need all these you brains. You see, you need both kinds of minds. Yes. You need both kinds of minds. Um, and that's another thing that in the, my book on visual thinking, okay. um, you have to put my name in along with it too, otherwise Amazon and won't I'll, pull it up. I'll share it. Um, is is uh, the different kinds of minds have complementary skills. And the first step, and I get asked this by big corporations all the time, the first step is realizing that the different minds exist. Mm -hmm. It was a shock to me when I was in my 30s to discover that not everybody thought in pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a shock to me when I discovered that. Yep. Yep. I, I had no idea. I'm going to be getting your book. Okay. We're going to wrap this up because I think you have a very busy schedule. Yeah. You're amazing. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Well, thank goodbye. You. Thank you for having me.